Hey folks, uh, welcome to what was going to be the first in a long and <coughs> very boring series of videos um, about my reverse engineering the IGBT driver boards in the Tesla Model S inverter. Um, and I was going to thrill you with my, you know, hacking skills for want of a better word, but um, yeah, it, it's just working. It's not that hard. You just give it 12 volts ground and then you just put a driver signal in and the transistors turn on. Do you want to have a look? Let's have a look. So, on the bench, we have our inverter and we have removed the amp seal uh, connector this guy just taking that off that connects to the main board with a 20 pin JST plug um, the IGBT drivers uh, the, these doofers here so these three PC, PCBs each one of them drives two sets of IGBTs, a high side and a low side. And this is our logic board. Now, this 24 pin JST plug here has all of the connections for the three IGBT drivers. So there's eight pins going to each, uh, sorry, here we go. There's eight, there's eight pins going to each driver board so 38 24 uh, 24 pin plugs in down here on the um, logic board so um, on the logic boards themselves there is some test points and also writing so for example here you'll see ISO ground H so I've got a wire solder to that uh, so that we could monitor on the driver chip the driver pin and at the minute the transistor is turned off and we have minus 8.5 volts on the gate so these driver chips I was able to see through the goo and get the number from them and they are where have we got the data sheet here here we go they're an Infineon 1ED020I12FA. Uh, that's the kind of pin out for it. Uh, so pin 7 is the, the actual output pin. And it drives a couple of totem pole transistors here. Probably these two. Um, and there's two of the, dr the driver chips. I'm sorry about all the wiring here, but everything's really delicate and I don't want to move it but you can probably see it better on this board there's two there's the one nearest the connector is the high side and this one here is the low side there's also what I suspect to be a temperature sensor uh, connecting into each of the transistor blocks so there's also a DC to DC converter on here uh, this is the transformer for it and it provides the high and the low side isolated voltages uh, there are some driver chips and so on on the back so also here is a test point for a 12 volt a 5 volt and a ground so it was fairly simple just to use a continuity tester to come back through the wiring harness and identify 12 volts and ground and what we did is we just powered up the inverter here on the bench normally through the amp seal and just verified we had 12 volts and 5 volts on those particular pins um, so once we had that done you know I was kind of looking okay so there's my notes here is kind of going to look like you know scrolling here but um, so I was kind of working out you know what voltages were on what pins and what they possibly did I was also looking at what they did when it was powered up from the inverter and when it was just powered up from 12 volts by itself but anyway we've worked out uh, this 
you know, being the plug side, so looking into the plug, um, you have pin 7 as the ground, you have pin 1 as the 12 volts, um, and I suppose the two that we're most interested in then is that pin 3 is the high side drive signal and pin 5 is the low side drive signal. So how do we prove that? Well, what we got here hanging out of it um, is I've got a power supply connected here. I've got the big bench power supply hooked up. That's providing about 14 volts onto the DC rail at the minute. I have a, it's actually a 24 volt, uh, just a car, tail lamp, truck, tail lamp, uh, lamp here. Now what I've got is, I've got one side of it connected to battery ground, and one side connected to one of the phases, like it's the phase that's basically comprised of these two transistors. So if I turn on the high side transistor here, uh, we'll provide power into this phase and back to battery ground and we'll turn on the lamp. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. See here now everything is kind of a bit of a, a bit crazy. So let me get my probe here and go and turn on pin 3. There it is. So my gate signal has gone up to 14.8 volts and as you can see the uh, light is on, I take the signal off, the transistor turns off. Signal on, transistor turns on. So to check the low side then, uh, all I've got to do is to move the clip to the battery positive. And if I turn on the low side transistor, give it a place to ground, and there it goes. So I can just tap that on and off there. That's the... Uh, that's the low side transistor turning on and off. It seems Morse code to you guys probably. So, so that's our IGBTs. Um, well, one side, obviously all three of them will be the same. So, on the eight way block then, Logically, we have um, ground plus 12, uh, low side drive, high side drive. There's also two fault signals, uh, both of which are uh, at plus 5 volts at the minute because there's no faults on the... Um, there's no faults on the drivers. So that's six. So that leaves two more, and I suspect that those two are for a temperature sensor based in the, uh, you know, based near the transistors. Possibly, could be wrong, wrong plenty of times. So, anyway, didn't think that was gonna be that easy, uh, but there you go, sometimes you win uh, the battles. Um, so we will be back soon. Uh, when we're going to connect my, we'll connect a uh, Hoopner logic board to those IGBTs and we should be able to drive the Tesla motor with the Tesla inverter. The only other thing that I have to work out is the current sensors, uh, but compared to the, the IGBT drivers that should be fairly straightforward. We'll need to um, run some current through the phase terminals and see what the kind of uh, what the ratio of the current sensors is there's two of them on there um so okay then uh until next time um don't forget to subscribe and leave a like and uh we'll see you in the next episode and happy igbt driving